Roses are red, violets are blue. I'm a big fan of poetry. Are you? Huh? Arabic poetry is known to be one of the most complex in the world. During the Arabic Renaissance or Al Nahda Al Arabiya, poetry writing and philosophy rose very high as focus on education and literacy was extremely important. Welcome to Speak Real Arabic, everyone. And today I'll be talking about some Syrian poets, their background, their contribution to literature, and some fun tidbits, as usual. I am your host, Ozzy, from Damascus, Syria, and I just wanted to say that in this new year, I have the resolution to hike. But before that, why don't you hit that subscribe and like? Eh? See what I... No? Okay, fine. Hey, I worked on that a lot. Anyways, let's jump into this video. So first things first, I feel like I have to talk about Ali Ahmed Saeed, or as you might know him, Adonis. He is the most influential Syrian or even Arabic writer and poet ever. Born in 1930, he led the modernist revolution in the second half of the 20th century and has been called the T.S. Eliot of the Arab world. His multi-volume anthology of Arabic poetry, or Diwan al-Shar al-Arabi, has been one of the most famous poetry publications since the early 1960s. Some of his most famous publications were A Time Between the Grave and Roses, or Waqt Bain al-Ramad wal Ward. This is my name, or in Arabi, Haza huwa ismi, A Grave for New York, or Qabil min ajl New York. He was one of the very few Arabic writers to be nominated for a Nobel Prize in 2011, right after winning the Goethe Prize in that same year. Now, of course, I know that reading poetry is not the best or easiest way to learn a language, but my favorite part of learning a language is also learning about the culture, and he is a big part of that culture. Adonis. Another writer that is a massive part of Syrian culture, of course, is Nizar al-Qabbani, which I'd say, and especially in Syria, is the most famous poet. You'll rarely meet a Syrian who have not heard of Nizar Tawfiq al-Qabbani. He was actually born in 1923, and in his early life he went to law school, then started working as a diplomat for the Syrian Foreign Ministry. In 1995, when the United Arab Republic was formed, he was appointed Vice Secretary of the UAR for its embassies in China. It is said that his solitude in China is what drove him to write so much, and it's kind of agreed that the writing he did in China was some of his finest. He has one of the largest collection of poems of any other Arabic, with over 30 published works. His style woven involved romance and modern love, starting with publications Just As You Are Mine or Enteli and My Beloved or Habibti. Random Arabic tidbit here, and I was actually asked about this a few times. What's the difference between Habibi and Habibti? Well, Habibi is an adjective you'd give a male, and Habibti is a female adjective. This T or Ta you hear at the end is called Ta al Mu'annaf or the T of femininity, which is used in Arabic to differentiate between the subject of adjectives gender. Anyways, some of Nazar's Kapani's last poem were 50 Years of Praising Women or Khamsun Aman fi Madiha al Nisa. Unfortunately, he passed away in April 1998 in London. Though on 21st March 2016, Google celebrated his 93rd birthday with a Google Doodle. How fun is that? Anyways, moving on to a female poet and an extremely prominent figure in the Arabic literary world, Mariana Marash, whose full name is Mariana bin Fathullah bin Nasrullah Marash. Just to have some fun. She was born all the way back in 1848 in Aleppo in Ottoman Syria at the time. In her early years, her father and mother fought to give her an education. It was considered at that time unnecessary for women to be educated, but they would not relent. She showed an interest in writing as early as 1870. She started contributing articles and poems to journals, especially Al-Jinan and Lisan al-Hal, both were in Beirut. 
This was, of course, unheard of at the time. Woman writer, this was extremely rare. She is attributed as bringing the tradition of the literary salon to the Middle East. You see, one time she traveled to Europe with her husband, and she was so impressed by the idea of intellectuals meeting to discuss the issues. She opened her own intellectual salon when she returned to Aleppo. Her most notable work was Bint Fikr, or A Daughter of Thought. She unfortunately passed away in 1919, but not before leaving a massive print on the literary world. So, I guess these were some Syrian poets that I thought I'd share with you. Thank you so much for listening. Go check them out. They are fantastic. And, you know, as usual, the comment section exists for you guys. Let me know what you want me to talk about. Anyways, I guess I will see you all in the next video of Speak Real Arabic. I'm your host, Ozzy. Take care.